I'm in Kaikoura, Kaikoura. I'm moving over here. That's my house. That's the beach, pretty awesome. It's not actually my house, I wish it was. I'm looking after it for the owners. Uh, they're back in mid-January, so when they get back, I'll have to find another place. But until then, welcome to my new home. Pretty awesome. Righty ho, let's go check out this new place. <sighs> welcome home. I said come here, Mungo! This is Will's girlfriend's deaf dog. That's not the dog, that's Will. <laughs> so yeah, this is the house. It's uh it's pretty awesome. Ooh. Just been in Christchurch for a couple of days, cruising around on my BMX. Getting some more audio done for the series in China. This is Joseph. Give us a wave. Here we go. Hey mates, how you doing? So this is Joseph's place. This is the kitchen, the lounge, the recording studio. Everything. Everything. He's got pretend drums. They don't actually work. <laughs> don't know what kind of music he makes. <laughs> Nothing very good. Um, Electric drums, I'm sure that's how mean as when they're plugged in. He does have a Stratocaster on the wall, so that tells me he knows what he's doing. Telecaster, bro, Telecaster. Oh, it's a Telecaster. I've never heard of a Telecaster. It's the OG. Telecaster came first, and then the Stratocaster came after that. Oh, so I don't even know about the Telecaster. I don't play that much electric guitar, that's why. I always wanted a Stratocaster when I was a kid. There you go, it's a Telecaster. It looks actually a bit rungy. Yeah, it's had a hard life, that one. Full it's probably worth like a million dollars. Just Japanese one. It's This is Jimmy Page's original guitar. <laughs> one million dollar he I know where Joseph lives now. I'm going to come around and steal it. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it, bro. It's probably yours. Easy. Here we go. Whoa, whoa. Let me check on here. Just going to give this puppy a bit of a reboot. Just for that. All right, enough. I'll get that. We're going to crack into it, and then uh, I'm going to go have some food. <laughs> What's that? So thanks for all your efforts in getting this done. Really appreciate it. No worries, mate. <laughs> I'm here to help. <laughs> Too easy. Too easy. All right, bro. Be in touch. Getting some more audio done for the series in China, which has had lots of views. 10 million views on the first episode, which was pretty encouraging. Not that I make any money per view, but still, it's pretty encouraging because it means I might get to go back. My mind is blank. Oh, God. Give us some help. Yeah, we're almost there. We're nearly here. This may be the most dangerous time in this mission. The depths are the most dangerous. All right, I'll see you down there, mate. I can swim a little bit. Do you know if there's many sharks in this area? You get it wrong up here, you're in serious trouble. This is brutal. <laughs> we made it. I actually wish that I just bought the place. Unfortunately, I'm only looking after it till mid January.
Oh, it's really lovely. And wait till you see the gardens. Some angelica there. Oh, some puha. Lemon balm. Sage, thyme, hmm, really is an amazing property and there's an orchard out the back here as well. Just saw a rabbit leg it across, oh there's another rabbit over there, that Charlie is going to be fizzing when he visits. Rabbits in the orchard you can shoot. The woodshed. Wow, it's even got a little shearing shed here. If I had some sheep to share, I could share them around. Quail, I just heard some quail up the back there, so there's probably quail in the orchard as well. Amazing, amazing house. Maybe one day I'll get a place like this. There's the ocean right there. All right, puppy time. Just got him in a bucket of salt water, spitting the sand out. Wow, welcome to my new home. Yes, I'm on the other side of the country now. Far, far away from the life I once knew. Living by the seaside. It's only temporary, here for a couple of months and then goodness knows what after that. A new chapter in life, I guess. Cooking. Cooking. Now occasionally I'll hear people say, oh I'm not a very good cook, oh I'm such a shit cook, oh I don't know how to cook, oh I wish I could cook better. But cooking is actually pretty easy. You just need a heat source and some ingredients and you just need to make it up as you go along really. It's, it's all about experimentation. And occasionally you'll cock stuff up and occasionally you nail stuff. So what I'm going to make today, I'm going to make a wee pasta dish using some tutus or some pippies. And we've got our pippies here. They've been soaked in a bucket of cold water overnight. And that just helps spit all the sand out because if you eat them fresh, they're full of sand. I recommend using seawater. That's what I use. Put them in a bucket overnight, spit all the sand out. Pull them out, give them a quick wash under the tap just to get rid of any sand that's still on the shelves. And then steam them open. Other ingredients, we've got some ginger and some garlic and some herbs from the garden. Now different herbs go with different foods. You'll just have to Google that shit. See what Google says about it. Or you can smell the herb and think, oh, is this going to go well with this food? Just as a rough guide, thyme, rosemary, which are two of our most common herbs, they go really well for meat and fish. And then you've got your basil, your coriander, your parsley, 
they go really well with vegetables like tomatoes and they can also go well with meat and with fish. Bay leaves really good with meat. Uh, have a Google why bay leaf is really good to cook with. It's quite fascinating actually, the old bay leaf, but I'm not using bay leaf in this dish. I've just got some fat leaf parsley and some lemon thyme. I don't actually have a grater here. I just moved into this place, so I don't, I don't, even, I don't even have a fry pan. I've got one pot, I've got some chopsticks, and heat sauce, that's about it. Some other ingredients here, fresh tomatoes, I've got a uh, fresh red onion and some pasta, some fettuccine pasta right there. And I've also got for greens, I thought I'd just throw some green shit in. I'd add mushrooms to this dish too, but I don't have any mushrooms with me, so I'm not going to. I've got some asparagus, hopefully they'll go well with it. I don't even know if they're going to go well, I'm just assuming they are. I think I've had asparagus in this dish before, Sam's just recently actually, so I'm thinking they do go well. But you can just make it up as you go along. Try to make your dishes colourful. Not only is it visually appealing, it's quite healthy. You can get as many colours in there as you can, vegetable wise, then you're doing all right with the vitamins and all the rest of that stuff. So Will put me onto the best foods, real mayonnaise and balsamic vinegar, a bit of a mix. Uh, essentially it's just salad dressing and balsamic vinegar. And you can use that as a base for any kind of sauce really. It goes really well. You can also use cream, or you can just use a butter base, but the egg in this, I'm sure you can make your own dish with fresh egg and egg white and bloody whisk it all up and make one of those, what do you call them? A uh, aioli to go on it, but I'm just doing this quick and easy, and hopefully some of you fellas and fellas out there that are having trouble cooking yourself really easy, quick, simple, tasty meals can use these tips and tricks along the way. I quite often use sweet chilli sauce. In my cooking, or if you want to go more natural, just use honey. I quite like sweet chilli sauce because I like the spiciness and the sugar. Oh, the sweet, sweet sugar. I've got some butter here, just unsalted butter, because the normal salt butter is really bad for you, the salt in it. Uh, some fine, Himalayan pink rock salt, and I've got some sea salt, some pepper, some virgin olive oil, and I've also got some olive oil that's lemon infused. Now I'll pick that up just because I don't have a grater for my lemon zest, so I bought that instead of buying a lemon zest grater because I didn't have any at the supermarket. Okay, let's crack into it. So, first things first, I wish I had two pots here, it would make life a lot simpler. So first things first, you probably want to cook your pasta and then set aside. The pasta, you don't want it al dente, now al dente is when the pasta is still a little bit raw inside. You only want it al dente if you're adding a sauce to the pasta and then cooking the pasta with the sauce because then the pasta absorbs the sauce. I guess you could go al dente for this dish but I'm going to cook the pippi separate. They're already going to be cooked when I add it to the dish so I don't really want to cook them anymore or they'll get tough. So I'm just going to fully cook the pasta, rinse it under cold water to stop it cooking and set that aside and then I'm going to cook the pippi all right, pippi is pretty easy. You can add a little bit of water in there, uh, a splash of water to help them open, or you can just put the pippies straight into the pan and let them steam open from the heat. I like to put just a little bit of water in there to get them going, because then it helps the steam develop quicker, and then you've got a little bit of liquid in the bottom of the pan once the pippies are cooked, and we're going to save that and add that to the dish, because that's a natural stop, the liquid that comes out of the pippies. Pippi juice. Delicious. Alright, so let's get those cooking, we'll cook those, we'll take them off, and then we're going to chop all these ingredients, and I'm going to start off with frying the chopped up garlic and the chopped up ginger. Woo! Water's boiling. Pasta needs salt. Biff it in there, biff it in. Now you don't need to chuck oil in the water when you cook pasta. The trick is to push the pasta into the water. Push it in. Push it. Or stir it, one or the other. Use pink Himalayan rock salt or sea salt, you fellas, because natural salt is bad shit. It's got silica in it, and the silica gets into your arteries, and it grates against the arteries and causes 
cholesterol build up. Whether or not that's true, I don't know, but I did see an article once where a doctor said it was true, so I'm just going to take it as fact. And it may be a placebo, but I think I'm going to live longer because I eat pink and lemon, not salt, and sea salt. And this stuff's got heaps of minerals in it too. Well, sea salt does too. It's the goodness. Alright, let's put that there. caramelize the onions if you want and get that sugar to come out or you can just sweat them down. I like to sweat them down. I don't want to, don't want to get anything too burnt on there. Oh look at the colour of that garlic. Bean. And now our onions are looking a little bit translucent. I'm going to smack the tomatoes in there. And at the same time I'm going to pop just a little touch the sweet chilli sauce in there, just a little bit, now you don't have to add the sweet chilli sauce, it depends on how sweet the tomatoes are, but it's early on in the season now, and these tomatoes are hot house tomatoes, they don't have a lot of flavour, so I'm going to put some of that sweet chilli in. Well, what you're looking for when you're cooking to get the perfect meal is you want a little bit of sweet, you want a little bit of sour, you want a little bit of hot and you want a little bit of salty. And if you can combine those ingredients all together, now if you can get that combination in with some really good ingredients, you're on for a winner. The basic rules of cooking, you just need heat and you need ingredients and you need something to cook it in or on or with and just make it up as you go along. Because life's too short to eat shit food, eh? Now I'm going to put a little bit of balsamic vinegar in there. You don't want to overcook your tomatoes. Don't want to overcook them shits. Splash some of that in. Then I'm going to splash some of this in. Doesn't splash very well. There you go, a couple of uh, dessert spoons of that, maybe. Mmm. Mm. Best food to paint, eh? It's so good. And now I'm going to smack my herbs in. There we go. And we'll just stir that up there. And get these last little bits of herbs. And uh, oh, where's the garlic I put aside? I already put it in. All right, too late. Doesn't matter about that. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in. My lemon infused olive oil. All right, there we go. I'd love to grate some fresh lemon zest in there. the pasta. Now I'm just going to stir it around until that pasta warms up and the pippies warm back up. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfectly cooked tomatoes. Now I'm just going to mm, chuck it on actually have a plate. I'll just use the pot lid. There we go. Chuck it on the pot lid. Oh look at that. Man that looks good. Get in there. All I'm missing is some parmesan cheese. I'll probably put a little bit of parmesan cheese on there, but I don't have any, so. A bit of pepper, a lot of pepper, some salt. Done, and you could garnish this with some green shit, I don't know, some spinach or whatever, but I'm just gonna eat it like it is, because it's so bloody good and I'm so hungry. Time are you to go. Get a close up of that. My action cam. Oh, look at that. So much flavour in there. So good. Love the texture of the turtles. They're firm and chewy and oh man. 
Mm. Oh man, that tomato. Mm. Taste of ginger and that. It's your time. The crisp, crunchy garlic. You feel the cute, baby. So good. Mm. I just realised that I didn't put any of the stock in, but it turns out it didn't need it. So that juice, the pippy juice that comes out of the pippies when you steam them, man, that makes real good seafood stock. And you can actually make real good soup out of it. A little bit of salt and pepper will reduce it down a little bit. A little bit of salt and pepper, a splash of cream, and if you want some finely sliced ginger or some grated ginger, and a little bit of lemon zest on top. Such good soup, and it's a real good base for seafood chowder as well. You might actually make some crayfish chowder, some seafood chowder, mussels, whatever else we can gather off the beach and out of the ocean. Because after all, we are in Kaikoura, and Kaikoura stands for food, crayfish. And I wish I could speak Maori, I really do. Never too late to learn. Mmm. Cheer. Cream. Hey, cream.